Thanks very much. Um, and I, I would actually like to start by thanking um, Councillor Chalmers, COSLA, the Improvement Service, today's presenters and attendees, not only for organising today's event, but for your continued commitment to tackling commercial sexual exploitation. And as Maureen has just said, you know, as a previous member of East Ayrshire Council and a previous COSLA spokesperson, I'm well aware of the incredible work that takes place across Scotland day in and day out as we look to address this terrible aspect of our society. Um, and as the new Minister for Community Safety, I am pleased to have an early opportunity to meet and speak with you today. I'm equally keen to hear from you all about what more we can do and should be doing, both in relation to commercial sexual exploitation and the further promotion of our equally safe strategy. In addition to the equally safe strategy's role in preventing and eradicating violence against women and girls in Scotland, our vision for justice in Scotland also aims to ensure women and girls live free from all forms of violence and abuse, as well as the attitudes that perpetuate it. And my vision is of a Scotland where all women and girls are treated with respect and tackling sexual exploitation is a key to realising this. And I'm sure we're all in agreement with that goal. It is quite simply unacceptable for a modern Scotland that there are men who view women as commodities that can be bought and sold. And this does not reflect the country of equality that we should be. Our work to tackle CSC therefore forms part of a series of steps we are taking to tackle misogynistic behaviours in society. And not only is it crucial that we challenge and deter men's demand, but it's equally important that we develop a collective approach to tackling the structural inequalities that can lead women and girls becoming at risk of sexual exploitation. And this is why the work to progress our commitment to develop a model for Scotland to challenge men's demand for prostitution is not only considering the justice related aspects. Through the development of a national framework, it will also take a holistic approach to this issue and crucially will also aim to support those with experience of prostitution. Considering the wide range of issues that can affect those with experience of prostitution, our framework will be underpinned by an intersectionality based approach, which acknowledges the links to wider forms of violence against women and girls. This is absolutely crucial. And I was pleased to note that Dr. Laura Jones spoke about the lived experience research she undertook for the Scottish Government to help inform this work. This research demonstrated the need for a joined up multi agency approach to supporting those with experience of prostitution illustrated by the fact that those taking part in the research had on average seven different forms of support needs, often with individuals having to retell their story on multiple occasions when interacting with mainstream services. And we know that this is a barrier in itself. Within Scottish Government, we have drawn together an internal policy forum, which membership of over 60 officials across a wide range of policy areas, which has enabled us to have cross-cutting discussions to inform the collective approach required to develop the framework. And I know Laura's presentation on the forum had a profound impact and underscored why we must double efforts to deliver a truly holistic approach. And over the next year's officials will take the next steps in stakeholder engagement on the framework. And to underpin the framework, we have worked with an expert stakeholder group, which includes membership of some of the organisations represented here today, and a supporting reference group to develop the fundamental principles. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank all of them for their input and that to reassure everybody that we'll continue to work with you as we move forward. And I'm pleased to announce that the principles have been published today. And going forward, this will guide our national approach to tackling prostitution, helping to embed the key components needed within policy, service design and delivery to tackle prostitution and support those affected. The principles comprise of aspects including a national approach, reinforcing that there is no place for commercial sexual exploitation of any individual in Scotland. And that as we deliver this, we ensure we better understand the specific circumstances associated with those involved in prostitution and acknowledge this group as victims of exploitation and not perpetrators of crime. Supported by the approaches to promote social inclusion and address stigma. And I've touched upon the systemic, societal and economic disadvantages and circumstances that can foster sexual exploitation. And our principles will also be driven by a preventative approach. Another important aspect of the principles is that we support recovery and when ready, sustainable exit. Ensuring that all adults with experience of prostitution can access both emotional and practical trauma informed support. 
whatever stage they are at in their journey. Our Delivering Equally Safe Fund currently supports sorry, currently funds around um, £700,000 over two years to support projects focused on delivering such support to women with experiences of CSE. And key to the principles is our approach, continuing to be informed by lived experience. And having worked as a women's aid worker in refuge and on front line supporting women experiencing commercial sexual exploitation, I understand the importance of this and I'm committed that we continue to listen. And even with the diverging views on prostitution, responding to the structural and economic inequalities that impact women are an area of consensus. These are factors which the principles reflect, and I'm hopeful that we can enable some degree of consensus as we further develop the framework, and in doing so, help address these inequalities, and in turn, improve the outcomes for those affected by prostitution. Our framework being rooted in these principles will also help raise awareness across Scotland of the issues associated with prostitution. And I would encourage you to consider how you will help support the principles being realised within your own organisations. And I've written to my ministerial colleagues to ensure the principles are applied across Scottish government portfolios and reflected in relevant policy and practice. And when we review existing initiatives as well. I was pleased to see, also see that Linda Thompson from the Compass Network has spoken today. Linda is an exemplar to the commitment and energy and that, what can that bring to the challenge in this area of work. The Scottish Government funded CSC AWARE project, which Linda and her colleagues are driving, is a great example of ensuring that this happens. And I welcome that they are encouraging people to make a pledge to be CSC AWARE. And I hope actions like this will also make those affected by CSC feel more comfortable and seeking support. Our lived experience and research highlighted the unfortunate role of stigma in people not being able to access the support they need. One interviewee's reflections of interacting with a mainstream service was, they look down on you and think that you can't turn things around and that you will be there forever. This is absolutely a perception that we must change. In addition, our international comparisons research and current challenge demand approaches also published this year, identified that an important component of tackling demand is changing so, uh, social attitudes to prostitution. And it is therefore crucial that we undertake a collective effort to overcome stigma, taking a person-centered approach as we do this, ensuring that those affected feel part of our communities and feel able to access any support that they need. Delivering the principle needs, to be in, needs the engagement of the full range of interests across Scottish life. For example, local authorities, Police Scotland, the justice systems, the NHS, social work, housing, education, the media, third sector organisations and communities too. But I know that you all know this. It's only by working together that we will successfully challenge men's demand and tackle the attitudes and factors which drive this while supporting those affected. As commercial exploitation reinforces male entitlement and is inextricably linked to sexual violence, we need to take a holistic approach in our response to tackling violence against women and girls. And as part of this, we need to be we need to consider how we tackle CSC more broadly. And this was something I was clear on in my recent interview on the BBC The Nine last week regarding sexual entertainment venues. We don't want to live in a society where women's bodies um, when men continue to have access to women's bodies in ways that actually perpetuate women's inequalities. So that bigger societal harms come out of things that some people might think are not actually that harmful. Our work to develop the framework to tackle prostitution will take into account this interconnectedness with CSE, and it will therefore align with the review and refresh of our human trafficking strategy. And tomorrow I'm attending the launch of Sarada's report on forced migration and sexual and gender based violence, which I'm sure will also help to inform our considerations. And I was pleased to see the re recent launch of Hemet Grave's Women's Aid video, um, online video and association with Police Scotland, which provides reassurance to all victims of domestic abuse and sexual exploitation that they are protected by law and have the right to help and support from the police. With the video's message having a particular focus on women who may be refugees or recently migrated to Scotland, who unfortunately can be especially vulnerable to threats of exploitation and abuse. And it's also increasingly important for us to consider the sexual exploitation that takes place online. 
And the cross-party group on CSE reported last year of the impacts of sexual exploitation advertising websites, turbocharging exploitation. And we also saw really disturbing reports earlier on this year that amidst the escalating Ukraine conflict, they were increasing in online searches related to the sexual exploitation of Ukrainian women. I think that threw a lot of us for a loop, but unfortunately was not unexpected. Against the backdrop of the proliferation of ex explicit content online, accompanied by an often positive media portrayal of the image sharing platforms that enable this, we need to ensure that we're educating our young people and society as a whole about the harms that come from these activities. And officials continue to liaise with the UK government on the UK Online Safety Bill, but I'm also keen that we consider what we can do in a Scottish context to ensure we tackle the online elements of CSC and wider violence against women and girls. And of course, there have been additional factors, you know, COVID-19, the cost of living crisis that have contributed to the opportunities for commercial sexual, sexual exploitation. And it's really important that our approaches continue to tackle not only existing drivers for demand, but also the emerging ones. And given the range of challenges associated with CSC, and as we take steps to develop our framework to tackle prostitution, and at the same time turn to updating our equally safe strategy, it is timely to refocus and reposition the role of the previous multi-agency CSC group, which has been in abeyance for some time. And my officials will provide further detail in the new year as to how this forum can support the many aspects of the current work which combined form our collective approach to tackling CSC. And I'm pleased that we have had the spotlight on this issue today. But beyond the 16 days of action, I look forward to working with all of you as our framework continues to develop further, as does our collective approach to tackling this issue. And at the heart of the Scot Scotland's national performance framework are the values of being a society which treats all of our people with kindness, dignity and compassion. And in order to realise this, we need to ensure that women and girls can live free from sexual exploitation. Thank you, and I'm looking forward to being part of your breakout discussions that are going to follow.